Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Curl Space Program 0.25. In this episode I hope to do a bunch of stuff. Uh, first of all I want to send a power plant over to the moon and so we'll connect it up with our colony and thereby provide power for other services including agricultural services in the future and so we need a lot of power for that and hence uh, we've got here a nuclear reactor of some sort uh, which uses enriched uranium and produces depleted uranium so hopefully that will do the trick but but aside from that I have to test a new launcher and the reason I'm uh, going with a new launcher is because first of all I wanted a single body design and second of all I wanted to try a new method of uh, reusability I want to try and land this vertically this time uh, just just as a test and so I've got the parachutes here, which which has the benefit of them being shielded instead of them being on the outside, in which case they're subject to deadly re-entry. They're ringing uh, um, advanced SAS modules, so that'll provide a torque to create the stability so that the parachutes don't get exposed because the rocket is tilting one way or another. But one thing I'm, I'm leaving exposed, and this, this probably won't work, uh, I'd say this has a very low probability of success altogether and I've, I've redone the base here I've got these uh, I've got four LVT 30s on this thrust plate multi adapter but I've got a size limit on that it's uh, limited to three meters so I couldn't put these outer ring this outer ring of LVT 45s on it as well so I did the same trick I did before but what you're wondering about is probably the floats and there's an odd place to put floats I mean if I deployed this you see, uh, they don't really cover the engines quite well, but I I've got a trick. I don't know if it's going to work. Yes, I've used Infernal Robotics, and I've got them on pistons. And I don't know if the pistons will hold or if anything else, but the pistons lower them. I could probably add more piston stuff to lower them even further. But the idea is to shove them further out away to help flotation and here if you see when this deploys it's more or less a continuous flotation area and that a lot of you uh, well some of you provided some interesting ideas for how to make this whole recovery system or not this system but just recovery in general work out nobody suggested this I don't think um, a lot of good ideas but I decided to try this because it seems audacious uh, and uh, probably is uh, um, ambitious but rubbish basically so we'll see <laughs> but uh, yep the key thing is to make sure that the the reactor gets to where it's going that might be tricky our Delta V situation is pretty tight um, because of all the stuff and especially because we need to reserve some fuel in this stage in order to bring it back down uh, it's only got eight parachutes on top, so that's not enough to slow it down. It needs to be able to do some thrusting in order to slow down before it splashes down. So I have to remember to save some fuel for that. Okay, I think that's all the key things that I need to talk about. It's a little bit dangerous because we're basically just shy of orbit, so the heating is going to be really tremendous on this, and I'm worried about the heat tolerance on these floats. That's going to be a thing. But anyway, uh, let's give it a go. We've got a lot of science to use too, and maybe that'll unlock stuff that'll totally change this sort of design. And so I'd have to look into that, but not right now. I decide I, I was inspired to do something crazy like this, and I shall do so. All right. And actually, let's put some launch clamps and then we'll go out to the launch pad. Okay, here we go. I've got Samden Kerman in there. Uh, hopefully this is not inadvisable, but I think we need a Kerbal in just to make sure control is okay. I, I forget if I've got a remote controller. In any case, it's a little bit more poignant if you have a Kerbal involved. And I think uh, that's an okay thing. I'm going to arm FMRS since we do plan to bring the stage back I don't know what phase of the flight we will be doing that um, everything looks to be a go Sound then sure has food, water and oxygen no problem there 
All right. Uh, well, I hate to uh, put a Kerbal in on a on a test flight of a new launcher, but I would fee feel better about uh, bringing this to the surface of the moon with a Kerbal involved, especially since it's a reactor and everything. Okay, so here we go. By the way, I named the rocket Beluga. Uh, basically, I was thinking about some sort of sea animal in the hope that the oceans will be kind to it. So, uh, just the name Beluga seemed to be appropriate for a rocket. Go figure. I, I don't know if it is or not. And maybe I should have picked a name that would appease the fire gods instead because because we are going to be going through deadly re-entry. Oh, and the center engines seem to have a overheat problem here. That's not nice. The overheating doesn't seem too severe. Pretty stable. Uh, I didn't put fins on and we aren't getting any sort of roll on it. Not yet anyway. Alright, looking fine. Looking mighty fine. Okay, I think we should be clear to dump the fairings. Very good. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave about 200 Delta V in this stage. Okay, so that's that. We've got a good apoapsis there. The second stage will have to do the rest of it. Okay, uh, separation. FMRS has it. Okay, good. So ignite this stage. All right, and all right, right. Okay, so basically we're coasting up to apoapsis at this point. Oh, Sam Dunn is looking a little bit happier now. Okay, that's good enough for me. Alright, so in orbit, ready to go for the moon and getting into orbit around the moon. Plenty of Delta V for that, so no problems here. And uh, we also have the fuel for the for the orange so that it can refuel and bring the module back down. Alright, so uh, let's switch to our separated stage. Okay, and here it is. Very nice. And yeah, good, good, good. It's sort of deviating. Let's have SAS on. What's our power situation like? Got some, not an infinite amount, obviously. Let's let's wait until we're going back down. We've we've tossed this much higher than usual, and so it's gonna experience quite a lot more more deadly reentry than usual. And I'm still worried about the floats being able to survive that. Okay, we're headed into the dark. Can't really see. There's a mountain there of some kind. I really don't want to hit land in this case. That is not according to plan. Okay, here it goes. Deadly reentry part. I'll select. Oh darn, the temperature's way off. Okay, well that take care. This that takes care of all the floats. Uh, there's still a chance to recover this, though. Not much of a chance, but some chance. Oh, not now. Oh, ow. Okay. Yeah, floats on the bottom, not such a great idea after all. But the engines are still on, and we've got parachutes. Let's see.
obviously the key thing is the flop in the water okay we should be clear for parachute deployment we are headed down pretty darn fast gotta take SAS off temporarily Okay, full parachute deployment. Oh, fudge. Um. Wow, that was just way too quick. I think we definitely can't bring this back from that kind of that kind of trajectory. Maybe a gentler trajectory when we're going slower. Uh, so it'll carry heavier loads in that case and we'll expand the second stage. Maybe that's the way to do it. And that'll reduce the entry heat. But I don't think, I don't know if I can reduce the entry heat to a, a degree that uh, will allow the floats to survive in that location. Okay. It says recovered, I think. Get rid of that. Okay, anyway, so yep, we're back with the main mission. I, it, it's tough to figure out uh, how to put the floats though. I mean, even if you put it on the side, it uh, wouldn't survive necessarily. Not with deadly reentry and all. It'd still heat up. At least the bottom pair would. And if you lose the bottom pair, then there's going to be imbalances and all that. I'll have to think about it. Of course, I could go with some of the suggestions that have been offered and maybe those who be better but I tend to whenever I try and redesign these things I suddenly come up with an idea of my own and it's probably inadvisable but it's interesting now this is not the only thing I want to send over today and uh, once this is on its way to the moon I'll launch a few more things and I'll show you what those are maybe we'll get a chance to test a variant of the of the beluga. I haven't decided yet. Okay, here we go. Okay, well, you've got a good trajectory, so that takes care of that. Let's go back to the VAB and see what else I have to launch. Okay, so this is the next thing and lots to talk about here. First of all, uh, this is basically a replacement for the gold bug and it was inspired by the Nerd484 who reminded me that we've got crew carrying airplane parts. The space plane plus parts can carry a substantial number of crew members at a very low mass and also they help make sure that the center of mass is relatively low compared to the hitchhiker storage container and of course we also have fuel tanks that are suited for it so we've got fuel there and there for the for the little Rockamax 2477s that we use to uh, to get the descent right and of course to uh, get us off the surface if we need to do a little hop of some kind uh, here I've got the carbonite converter again and we've got the carbonite tank, the generator, and of course the drills. So everything is still there. It costs a little bit more to do it this way. And so there's that uh, little bit of a problem. But uh, we get to use this little herp pod. That's a nice addition. One thing I didn't add is a, a unmanned controller. And I guess I'll just uh, pass on that this time. We will have this launch manned. Um, Martin Ellis uh, reminded me that uh, we can scale up the wheels. So this is also benefiting from the fact that I scaled up the wheels to 140% instead of just keeping them small, which I did on the gold bug. So hopefully this will be a much, much more stable sort of thing. Why I'm building a craft that can carry so many kerbals, I have no idea. It actually carries one... Uh, less than we would normally need. Uh, it, uh, if we wanted to fulfill the contract, for instance, we'd carry uh, 10 or more. I'm only carrying 9 here, and that's because I just didn't want to make it too long, and I like this shape better. Uh, we could, in theory, slip a um, docking port module or something in between here, or even another crew cabin or something, 
but I didn't see a need for that just yet. I did put a small docking port up here just so that we can control from there if necessary. I don't know if that'll be necessary or not. The, the, the Herp Pond doesn't have much reaction control, of much torque, and so that's why I've got an inline reaction wheel here. Uh, this tank is the mod propellant tank. So we do have RCS thrusters as well. And so that's that's that. That's the I've called it the Moonmaster One. Uh, again, very hopeful name. Not entirely sure it'll work out. I did add a winch at the back here. I I used a small size so that it wouldn't uh, have so much mass on it. Uh, but the problem with the small size winches is that they don't have much range when you pull them out. So it has to get pretty close to whatever it's going to be connecting to. All right, and uh, so that's that's all the good parts looking for. Now I think I only put uh, this radio connector port on one side so let me uh, fix that. I want it on both sides of this thing. There we go. Okay. So yes, now the Beluga A. <laughs> okay this also has very little chance of working but I made some improvements. Uh, I'm, I'm nothing if not persistent. Um, let me just get that stuff staged right so you can see the proper stats for this rocket. And the way the reason I uh, can do this is because the payload is much lighter. We're not carrying the extra fuel for the orange or the pumpkin uh, to bring us down. We're using the fuel on this Moonmaster in order to actually make the touchdown. So that leaves us with extra room to spare. I extended the second stage as I said I would. I've made it five minutes instead of four. And so it's got a lot more delta V, especially since the payload is lighter. And so that's there. But I also added a reserve tank for the descent. And that's a lot of fuel that we're keeping in reserve in order to make sure that this is not going very fast on descent. And its own delta V is much lower, so it's going to separate much earlier. And hopefully that means that we're not going to experience as much of the re-entry effects as we were on, on the previous mission where we were nearly orbital before detaching. Uh, I've also added extra parachutes as you can see, uh, staged separately, separately from the parachutes that are on the inside. I'm hoping here that all of this bulk will be able to protect these parachutes from heating, but there's no guarantee of that. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, I mean, it's it's probably not the case. In real life, it would not be the case that these would be protected from heating uh, by all the stuff all the way down here. The the currents would eventually hit those pretty severely. But anyway, so taking advantage of a lower payload in order to try and test this different variant of the Beluga. And so with that, let's pick our crew member. Uh, I gotta send Bill. Because everybody's going to hate me if I accidentally kill him. I'm going to send Mike. Alright, Mike Kerman will be the commander of the Herp Pod and the Moonmaster 1. Alright, so let's go. Unfortunately, the Moonmaster 1 does require a pretty large fairing, as you can see. So that's a slightly unshapely way to go. But hey, that's the way it is. Uh, we seem to be stable. SAS on. Mike Kerman looks interesting in that pod. That's an interesting look for him. Okay, I, I don't know, I hope I've got uh, all the action groups right on this one as well. Okay, uh, right, here we go. Much slower ascent because we're carrying a lot more weight. Center engine's heating again. But uh, we didn't have any problems with that last time, so I'll just leave it be. Passing through the cloud layer here. Seems a bit dark for Mike Kerman right now. Okay, I think we can dump fairings once we stabilize at the new heading here. Alright. Fairings are off. Okay, that's the first stage as is right now. I'm going to throttle down here. 
Then I'm gonna separate. Okay, activate this engine. This tank also has fuel for the descent burn for this, so that uh, we don't have to use the fuel in the Moonmaster itself in order to make the whole landing process. Best to allow it to make the the final part of it just like we did with the gold bug. Oh, by the way, you may have noticed I've added lights that actually shine on the vehicle itself. So we've got that going for the Moonmaster as well. It uh, has itself lit dimly, but still lit with backward facing lights. Okay, that is orbit. Alright, so I'm going to leave it be for now and turn back to our first stage, which, well, let's find out. Okay, so here we go. We've got a fair chunk of Delta V with this thing still. Let's unlock the... well, we don't even have to unlock the fuel from that tank. Let's flow it into the bottom tank, which will lower the center of mass a bit. Okay. Really, I'd, I'd want a, t uh, a tank right at the bottom here so we can really lower the center of mass. Maybe I should move that all the way down and add all these engines to that stage like that. But anyway, that might be a further improvement on all this. Let us just pass apoapsis for now. Let me check the temp on these things. Ah, it's getting high. Ah, uh, darn it. They all exploded. <sighs> well, so we can't test the floats. Let's just see if we can save this thing somehow. Come on, point retrograde. What is with this thing? Okay, uh, first salvo of parachutes, second salvo of parachutes. Okay, we've got 16 parachutes out. Got to take SAS off temporarily. We are over water without, well, okay, we have two flotation devices. Not exactly what I wanted. Okay. Okay, we've slowed down a bit, though not enough. I've got to put SAS on. Cover. Okay, well, the game crashed when I tried to recover vessel, but um, looks like we recovered it. No, that's the power plant one. That's not right. Huh. So maybe we didn't recover it, but FMRS has sort of lost track of everything. So, whatever. Uh, maybe we recovered it maybe we didn't but life goes on so I will continue it was not exactly what I wanted anyway certainly an improvement over the, the previous attempt but not not what I'm aiming for I'll have to do more work on that okay that will do for uh, transfer to the moon I have one other thing to launch, and that's the aeroponics module, which was the main thing I wanted to 
have the reactor for. We needed the power plant in order to power the aer aeroponics module. And so, but I think I'm going to have to send that over next time because I want to think through the beluga issues a little bit better and see what I can do with the design there. Uh, the lights don't really... I didn't angle them properly at the vehicle. They do a little bit of lighting. I wanted to sort of skirt the vehicle, not make it glaringly bright, but I didn't do enough. It's, it's not bad from this angle, though. The herp pod, does it have, it has its own lights, right? Ah, that's, well, Mike's face is still a little bit dark. The lights are not quite hitting his face properly. Oh, that's better. That's because the sun is rising there. Let's take a look at IVA for a sec. Ah, that's a good view. I don't see any instruments per se, well, except for a horizon there. Certainly this pod is something that is meant to control a rover, not so much control a spaceship, there's just no instruments. But the horizon, I guess, is sufficient if you're doing a rover. Now it's possible that with the winch this thing could tug the little modules around without using the docking port. Of course the current tug that uh, pulls the base modules around uses the docking port to connect to it but this could use the winch and just slap on a radial connector port to, to the base modules that it wants to move but I'm not too sure whether that's safe or not. We'll see. That's sort of uh, another purpose to having this this guy sent over. See if it will work as a better tug than the existing one. Okay, that's good enough. 64 kilometers. And it too is on its way out. Wait a minute. Shouldn't we have another mission on its way to the moon? Let's see Wacko, Moon Depot. The power plant is still in orbit. I think I guess that must be FMRS messing up. I'll uh, switch to the power plant and make sure that it's on its trajectory to the moon. All right, uh, but I'll do that uh, at the tracking station, and I'm gonna have to make sure that the save works all right. So uh, let me get that done, and I'll come back to you. Okay, so the power plant and Sandon Kerman are once again on their way to the moon. Hopefully FMRS will not mess around with me this time. Now I noticed that we had a little bit of a power issue on the on the moon master, so I'm going to head back over there and make sure its panels are turned the right way. It seems to be all right for charge, but it's not really facing the right way. Let's see. No, the other way will be better. All the solar panels are on the top of the rover. Of course, it can, once it gets to the moon, it can drill for carbonite and use the generator. But for now, or at least I hope it can. I hope I've connected everything upright and all. There we go. It's also got uh, two supplementary solar panels on the top, which I believe can be extended like that. So, just in case. It's got those little solar panels there too. So I'll leave those open for now. Okay, so we've got two more Kerbals headed to the moon, two more vehicles, and I think that'll do it for me this time. I uh, still haven't used the science that we've accumulated. There's a lot sitting there that I could use, but I haven't decided how to use it yet. And so we'll take a look at that perhaps in the next episode, but we've got other things to do as well. I've got the aeroponics module also to send up, but I want to work on the launcher a little bit more. And perhaps maybe we'll go back to trying to land it horizontally. I'll see. 
Alright, so with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.